Thank you. So, okay, so let's just talk about the conformance test. So, the, before conformance test, uh, let's talk about CWL because uh, it is uh, open format. Therefore, the uh, user can uh, write uh, your own CWL and also the, you can share the, your CWL with other people. And the other next step, maybe you want to develop your own work engines for CWL. <laughs> so uh, this talk is for the beginner of the here. <laughs> CWL uh, developers of CWL platforms. <laughs> so so yeah, yeah, the rest of this talk is very very detailed. So. But uh, maybe you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, so, okay. So when you develop the uh, workflow engines, um, maybe you can, you want to check the, uh, how your uh, workflow engine supports the specifications. In that case, uh, you can use the conformance test that that is provided by the CW project. And currently, it, uh, it, uh, it is a set of the tests, and uh, it provides maybe currently 197 or so. It is already increased before I made the test right, but uh, that's OK. <laughs> and uh, uh, how to use it? Uh, first, uh, clone the CW repositories. And uh, change the directory here. And uh, when you type this command, you can show you can see the several options how to run the or conformance test in your local machines or something. And uh, here is the basic instructions without uh, execute run under my test .sh without any argument. In that case, uh, uh, it runs all the conformance tests with the uh, reference uh, workflow engines. And uh, here is a, a part of output. In that case, and here is just an example. In this case, uh, it uh, is past uh, 100. Uh, 153 uh, test passed and uh, 13 figures and uh, several unsupported features. And also, you may want to run the, some specific tests, not, not all tests. In that case, you can use uh, these options. And also, you can test your own engines or your favorite workflow engines. But sometimes uh, it takes too long time. You can use a minus C option to uh, to run the test in parallel. Okay, so by using this command, you can run the conformance test in your environment. So the next step, okay, let's start developing the, your workflow engines to pass the, some conformance tests. And the, and the first step. Yeah, let's choose the uh, first test, conformance test number one. And uh, yeah, it is a test for the command line tool, not for the, not te it is not test the uh, workflow itself. It is just test uh, one command. And uh, in this test, it takes execute uh, uh, some uh, Python script here and uh, uh, capture some output objects from the uh, output file or something. And then, uh, yeah, uh, rest of this talk, uh, more and more details. <laughs> and uh, currently, uh, it consists of these three files. The one is the uh, two descriptions and also the uh, input parameters. And uh, finally, uh, Python script to be executed. And okay, so, here is the two descriptions of the first test. It's too long, but uh, you don't read it. 
<laughs> it's wrong, but uh, the, I only mentioned the, there are mainly uh, one, two, three, four, five graphics parts. Uh, here is uh, 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 input schema. What is the uh, input parameter? So, uh, what is the type for each, each parameter or something? And what is uh, base commands? And also the uh, what is uh, uh, some arguments with uh, uh, it is not related to the input parameters. And also the uh, what is uh, what should be redirected to uh, to the uh, to the file or something. Or also finally uh, there is an output schema to pass the uh, other tools. Okay, uh, here are uh, some input parameter files and also the Python script, but uh, I skip this right. It it's not so informative. And uh, okay, so here is some uh, one example for, uh, of the uh, execution results of the uh, reference implementations. It is um, we you can run the some workflow engine name and uh, some options and. Uh, CW5 and the input parameter 5. And then uh, as a result, you can see some output objects like this. And in this case, uh, it outputs uh, 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 some output fields uh, named the argues with uh, that uh, its type is uh, array of strings. So, okay, so. Currently, you can you can know you know the what is the input and uh, also what is the output of this test. So how to execute this test? Yeah, here is the overview of the uh, execution. The first of all, uh, you have to build the command line. What is uh, what should be executed? It is uh, built from the CW input file and also the uh, input par parameter files. And uh, you run the command like this. And finally, uh, you capture the output by using the, some output files and also the output schemas in CW files. So, okay. So, oh, oh, okay. So, first, let's build the command line from the CW files. So, okay, so first I show the, some results of the building the command line. Here is the result is command line uh, in, to be executed in the platform uh, workflow engines. And here is the part of uh, CW input files. And uh, in this file, uh, uh, this purple color uh, is corresponding to the this part, and uh, this green part is corresponding to uh, it is generated from this part from the input schema and also the input parameters, and this red one is generated from this argument, and finally this uh, blue one is uh, generated from here from uh, generated from output field. But then, yeah, the interesting thing is uh, around here, uh, the uh, input parameters and also the arguments is uh, somehow mixed in the command line. So why uh, these arguments is uh, ordered such in such a way? So the okay. So how to build it? So yeah, uh, first um, to how to correct uh, how to make the, uh, the command line. So to know that uh, you can see the this section in the spec in the uh, for the command line to redefinitions and uh, in the in. In this section, um, um, first uh, you can see that uh, some instructions to do that. And first, you uh, you uh, you have to correct uh, some command line binding objects from arguments fields here with uh, their sorting keys. And uh, 
In this case, uh, co command line binding object is, uh, corresponds to, uh, oh, sorry, uh, each object in here, PWA and MEM, and uh, this object is uh, as a command line binding object. Okay. And also we have to uh, make uh, some sorting key for each element. And uh, also we can see the several part of specs. You can see how to uh, make the sorting key for each element. First of all, first of all if there is a position field, it is used as uh, sorting key right here. But uh, if there are no position keys, uh, position fields, in that case, um, uh, the default value uh, zero is used for the sorting key. And also, uh, here is another uh, sorting for tie break. And, uh, in, yeah, and, uh, in the space, uh, the, you know, uh, describe like it is. In this case, uh, uh, 0, 1, 2 is uh, uh, used for type breaking sorting keys. Okay, so now we can correct the CLP object for argument fields. So, as a next step, we have to correct the uh, CLP object for input schema in a similar way. First, uh, and, uh, in the uh, input fields, uh, each uh, CLB object it corresponds to the, uh, this part, input binding fields. Here is a CLB object for reference parameter. In this case, here is a CLB object, like this, like this, like this, and like this. Okay, so after that, uh, we uh, need to associate each this CLB object with uh, input parameters. In that case, for example, the, uh, we associate with uh, this uh, values for reference parameters, like this, like this, like this, like this. But uh, note that uh, here is uh, uh, some uh, missing fields in the input parameter files, like this. Uh, for example, here, uh, I is not by in the uh, description of the tools, but uh, not in the uh, input parameters. In that case, uh, by reading the section 5.0, you can you uh, you can know the. In that case, we can use the uh, default fields of here, like this. Okay, so after that, uh, okay, so we can use, uh, uh, we can create the uh, sorting key for each CLB object. And also we can uh, read uh, these sections. Um, we can use, we know that uh, we basically use uh, position fields for the sorting keys, and also uh, we use uh, ID path for tie break. Like this, like this, like this, and so on. And, uh, okay, finally like this. And then, uh, but uh, uh, after making the uh, sorting keys, uh, we can remove this part because uh, after uh, this part, we don't use uh, these information. And okay, so after this, uh, after uh, this part, we can correct all CLB objects for input and also the argument. After that, we have um, we source the, these all CLB objects by using the these sorting keys. In this case, in these examples, uh, uh, this argument.py becomes the uh, first element, and also the, this one, BWA, becomes the second element, and so on. 
and it is a sorted result like this. And then um, once we uh, we uh, finish the sorting, now for or we can safely remove this sorting if we don't remove it anymore. And uh, after that, we finally uh, apply some con conversion rules in uh, section 5.1.2 and please see the specification in the details. <laughs> <laughs> I just only show the results. For example, uh, in this part, its value is uh, files. In that case, its lo location field is used for the command line argument. And storing is uh, as is, and memory is as is. And also, uh, here is the uh, it, uh, for this part, I, um, uh, in this part, uh, you have to uh, refer the several parts of <laughs> spec. But um, um, in this talk, I just see uh, this. I just keep the details, and uh, I just show the result. This one because uh, it really takes too much time, and uh, uh, we have time limitation about it. <laughs> and also, the, for uh, array of integers, we can generate this argument, and for integers, and then with prefix like this, generate like this, and uh, like this, and like this. And uh, finally, we got it. Oh. Okay, and so after that, um, we can insert the value of base command, this one, Python, to the uh, beginning of this command line. And finally, and uh, by using the, this out field, we can uh, redirect, we can add uh, some redirect path to this command. And, okay, so finally we got the command line to be executed for this uh, command line tools. This is the first part. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the second one is easy. Because uh, we already have the command line, so we just execute uh, this command. And after that, um, we can get uh, two files. One is uh, redirected from the command, and the second one is generated from the, this Python script. And the contents of the, this cwa.output.json is right here, like this one. Yeah, so running is okay. So the problem, one small problem is about the final one. That's uh, how to capture the output object. Yeah, uh, here is a, yeah, so it is a little bit small, but uh, you may see the, uh, there are the two fields named uh, sum and argues. And, uh, in some, there is uh, some uh, fields like a group or something. So maybe you may guess uh, this part will find uh, some files or something or so on. But um, in actual, it is not. Because uh, by checking the specification in section 4.4, and by in this, um, if there exists a cdwrs.output.json, uh, that file must be loaded and used as a output, output object. That is the, this one. The contents of this file is, becomes output object. And uh, what notice that, uh, yeah, you can see this one, and, uh, you can expect uh, to search this file, but uh, it doesn't happen because uh, the CWL specification first requires search for CWL.output.json. 
So it, uh, this information is not used in this test. Oh, almost the time. So now you know the, how to build the command and how to run the command and how to capture the output objects. So now you can develop your own work range for Silverware. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>